So on this week's episode of Be More Super, the podcast, we've got another great guest from Warrior Nun. It's Sylvia DeFanti. Sylvia, welcome to the show, my love. Thank you very much. <laughs> and it's a pleasure to have you on because I've got to say, your character in the show scares the hell out of me. Um, she's very, uh, you know, firm, oh. uh, but fair. Firm, firm, but fair. Uh, so to have you on the show it's an absolute pleasure and first of all I want to say congratulations on season two because I've got a a chart just here that it is the highest rated show in Netflix history uh, which you know speaks volumes on how well this show is doing uh, with the filmmakers and the fans which is just abs absolutely you know it's amazing so hopefully from this, we should get a season three announcement very, very soon. But before we start chatting about your wonderful show that you're part of, um, it always intrigues me, why acting? What sparked that sort of creative side of you to go into an industry that's so competitive? Hmm. Well, um, hmm. I guess I've always been a creative and uh, I think that since I was very small, I always kind of loved being at the center of attention. Uh, but I actually wanted to become a journalist. So uh, my studies went in that direction. But actually, when I was a kid, when I was in my teenage years, I used to, uh, during the summertime, I used to create shows for all the birthdays during the summer. And I was anchor woman, director, costume designer I dressed all my male friends as ballerinas and made these shows and uh, they were comic shows mainly but it wasn't really something that I had in my in my head I wanted to write I mean I always had that creative part of me that was quite alive and then when I was uh, around 20 I went to study to La Sorbonne uh, in Paris and uh, just out of curiosity I theater atelier and uh, <laughs> because I learned French very well during my stay um, but at the very beginning when I started this atelier I mean I knew French but it wasn't perfect uh, I went on stage in this uh, improvisation and uh, I remember just improvisation was about being in apartment just start smelling and using the smell and actually I didn't use words and I remember the teacher saying, oh, this is not your first time on stage. And I was like, yeah, actually, yes. And she was like, okay, this is talent. This is talent. And I was like, oh, I don't know what she's talking about, but I enjoyed. And um, the first time in front of an audience has been such a turning point in my life. I will never, ever forget the silence, lights going off, and then this sound, <laughs> huge applause in this um, amphitheatre. It was just uh it was just so it, it gave me shivers and i i walked out the stage and I, I said oh this this has to mean something it's just so powerful and mm -hmm. um and when i went back to rome i started studying and that was the beginning and the the adrenaline that you get on stage and that connection with the audience is just incredible it really really is so that must have been such an amazing experience for yourself but when starting out in the industry did you have or do you have a plan in place of what you want to do with your career? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, having a plan is really difficult in this, uh, in this job, in this, in this career. Um, I certainly wanted to get better and better and better. And so uh, I really wanted to... Um, to get my craft to be very sophisticated. So uh, I've always mm, worked and studied in the meanwhile. Uh, I always wanted to mm, to refine my craft. Uh, that was my plan. Uh, and then luckily, sometimes uh, that and the, mm, the careers, they get together. Um, and of course, Mm, then you meet people that are part of your team, like Stacy for me, uh, who's also my motivator. And, um, and 
and you create um, an environment around you that help you, uh, let's, say, let's not say plan, but at least have a direction. Mm. Um, but of course, my di not a plan, but I had a direction towards which I wanted to go um, in my art, with my craft, and uh, uh, in the choices that I made and that I want to make. But having a plan is, is I mean, you can have a plan, but the plan never works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's just in life. It's just like life. Mm -hmm. You can have plans, but you have to be elastic and ready to move and shift. Mm -hmm. And 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 also, I, I mentioned earlier on about how competitive the industry uh, can be. So, so you know, ob obviously, there's lots of ups and downs. So how do you keep motivated throughout those, you know, ups and downs of your career? Well, it is an up and down career, and it is a roller coaster. And uh, that that comes with a package, you have to know that it's <laughs> you you don't expect you don't have to expect anything stable or set or calm when you when you step into this career into this, into this world um so it's very important to have certain points where you can you know reference points mm. um in your team in your friends if you are lucky in your family uh an environment that surrounds you of you know with support with um with a healthy support um how do how do i keep motivated you know it's it's there are a lot of no a lot of no's a lot of mm, mm, feelings of disappointment or rejection and then and then you grow you start understanding that this is part of what it is. This is what you signed for <laughs> when you decided to be an actor, an actress, an artist in general. And, um, and so you, you just make choices that are, uh, the right choices for who you are. I am my, my personality also is a roller coaster. So <laughs> I'm that in life as well. So I, I had to build for myself certain, you know, constructions, certain structures. Uh, to then be able, you know, roots to then be able to grow and just flow with the wind. Uh, but you do need roots and you do need that to motivate you. I, I am lucky. I, I also have, I also have a company um, with a group of people, artists that I admire and that are also friends are very close. Um, I co-manage a cultural independence center in Rome. Um, so these are pieces of this puzzle which is my um, complex life. And I think that they're all part of a, of a picture that I can't grasp all, but I understand the moment my moment. Mm. Sometimes there are cracks and then you just understand how to make them work. Mm. Um, it's, a, it's a growing, ongoing experience. It's not something that you can learn from one day to the other. And I think you always keep on learning it. Um, but you made the right choice with Warrior Nun. So let's uh, touch on Warrior Nun because this is just a great show. Two seasons in. Uh, fingers crossed the third se season to be announced soon because the fans are going crazy, biting at the bit at the moment on social yeah. media. So what attracted you to the role of Mother Superior? Because it's just an awesome role. Well, uh, hmm, many things. First of all, I, I immediately felt a connection with Mother Superior. Uh, I felt her humanity. So this uh, public figure, public face, um, so severe and um, mm, powerful and strong and apparently without cracks. And then this face, this scar, which is a, a wound crack so there was a mystery there and that immediately attracted me to to mother superior and there's this mystery this this story this experienced woman that certainly had a lot to say and had a lot to go through to get it to that role to that mm, to that place mm? Mm. and uh, in the order right so um that was a, an immediate connection that i had with her 
I mean, how do you prepare for a role like this? Because not only is it the character, but it's also the background as well of someone in the church. I mean, what sort of re research and background did you do for the character and how did you prepare for such a great role like this? Hmm. Well, um, preparation has many steps. So once you feel a connection, you want to discover and explore more that connection. You want to go deeper. So uh, I ask questions about the role, the person. I ask questions. Where does she come from? Um, what happened in her life? What were the turning points? What were the, the wounds? What were the traumas? Um, what makes her happy? I mean, I, I could go on. There are thousands of questions that you can ask. And that's, you, you go inventing, you go uh, through your fantasy and you, and you create connections. You create these, um, these mappe, how do you say, these um, uh, cartographies of, 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 of what the character is, could be, um, what motivates her. And uh, through the writing, of course, analyzing, you know, script analysis, uh and then of course you learn the lines that's that makes you you know just gain freedom when you when you then act not only when you rehearse but when you're you know when action comes the more you know that perfectly the more you prepare the more you can just go with what you feel in the moment the present mm -hmm. once you connected with um with what you feel is the deepest part um of the character I uh, personally, I, I immediately worked on what could have been these primitive wound that is uh, the soul wound and the scar. Um, and I created my story. And, uh, <laughs> and then the more you discover about the character through the scripts, the more you add to this, um, to this, ter to this narrative about who is Mother Superior in this case. I mean, everything about her is captivating on screen, I've got to say, from the way that she walks, the way that she carries herself, um, even from the smallest little gestures that she gives pe 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 people. I just think it's a fantastic character. I mean, obviously, we see you in season one as quite scary, quite firm, as, as I said so earlier on. But how was the transformation to go from you into Mother Superior, Superior? I suppose from this question, I mean, from, you know, being off camera to actually going on to set, I mean, what was that transformation like? Because obviously you had makeup on and everything like, like, like that, but what was it like to go from Sylvia to Mother Superior? Well, you'd be surprised how scary I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not, uh, I'm very similar. I'm very mm. similar. Uh, what I mean for that is that um, this co connection is not casual. You put yourself in the role. So uh, all those characteristics that are there and maybe you don't just take out in, in, in daily life, or, and uh, sometimes I do, um, you just channel them more precisely in a specific direction. Mm. But they're there. It's just a question of knowing yourself and knowing where to find them in your spirit, in your soul, in your mm, deepest truth. But that's a, a truth that is shared. Absolutely. And uh, I just think that at the very beginning, first season, um, Mother Superior was uh, looking at the car and say, oh, I think I need to clean it. And then second season was like, oh, I, I need to set it on fire. <laughs> cleaning is off now <laughs> that's time of fire and i think it's just <clears throat> how also it, it grew with a uh, with a script and what was happening and uh, what was triggering mm. the deepest part of her uh a little bit the craziness but also vulnerability um getting closer to to her girls in an open in, in a in a more open way um and also um, more available to the feelings, to, to let her feel, mm. and just you know, give 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 her giving give, giving her these concessions about what what was the love about these girls and about the common sense of uh, sisterhood, 
and uh and then the comic part as well the irony uh so let's say that the, the scar started to be a kind of a of a screen where we started to see more and more and more and this was a, a fantastic chance for me i mean definitely going from season one to season two it's definitely changed the gears for mother superior's character and and, and how we see a a grow and and see the I, I don't know the gentler side of of her which is really nice to see the show is full of action and one scene in particular is in the room with all the bishops and father Fa, father Duretti, uh, which i just think is a stunning sequence and a stunning scene um you know these scenes are jaw dropping what were they like to work on with all that action <laughs> i loved it <laughs> i must say <laughs> I loved it. So the first day I started training and uh, I did know something about this fight that was you know, going to happen, but not in the details. Mm, uh, I spoke to Simon about it. He told me, you know, you're going to have amazing fights. I was so happy about that. So first day of training, I was enjoying it so much with this a sound, rocky sound, uh, soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> just feeling really strong and then just after an hour oh, God, I need to get more training <laughs> and so i spoke with uh with the amazing stunt guys lee and kai and i just said okay guys i need to train the more as possible and uh and, and and kai um the action designer he said okay you know if you want to be a superhero you have to train as a superhero so i became their obsession i literally asked them anytime they could to train and I could to train. So to schedule any time we could together to train the more as possible to be ready when then all the set and the choreography was, 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 um, was fixed. And, uh, I enjoyed it so much. And I, I took that so seriously and, uh, it was my, I just felt that that was mother superior's moment of excitement. Do you know what she that loves, that loves scene? It. What turns her on? <laughs> that scene where you take that sword out of your cane, I I was like, that is such a badass scene. I was like, go on, get him. But but we forget about the stunt team and Lee. I was chat, chat, chatting to Lee the the other day, and you know the stunt team are at the top of their game. I mean, Lee is part of Jackie Chan's uh, you know stunt like company. Uh, which is absolutely amazing. So kudos to them. Amazing st stunt stunt team for all the work that they've done on 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 this show. But when we come down they to the script, they were fantastic. They were fantastic. Mm. All of them. Um, amazing. Absolutely fantastic. amazing. Uh, when we talk about the script, I mean, how much freedom do you have as an artist on set with, you know, creative sort of, you know, if you wanted to change anything, did you change anything about? your script or the way that you shot some scenes? Well, um, first of all, we had a moment of reading of the blocks. So uh, all together on Zoom. And uh, that was a moment of exploration. So whenever we had doubts or questions, we had the chance to uh, open up about it and just talk very freely with Simon, with David. Uh, so that that was that moment already uh for exploring more and digging more and maybe adding something or changing something uh simon and david were all both very open to notes uh if if there was something that we would have preferred to change and they agreed of course that happened so it was also it didn't happen all the time but when when we did have something to, when I had something to say, I also, I always believed that I was heard and that uh, there was a talk about it. And um, and if not changed, I understood more about it by mm. discussing it. And, uh, or we adjusted it in a way that was more uh, adherent to the scene. Um, and then, yeah, I, I'm very proud about uh, one sentence, which is the, um, talking heads quote okay from the killer that is mine i'm really happy that simon agreed to leave it there <laughs> because there was this um uh camilla olivia had this uh, quote about um dolly pardon mm. and i said at the end just let's add something similar 
and uh, I just came out with you know, Psycho Killer and with that sentence in French, and I love talking heads, so it sounded appropriate for that moment and to and for Mother Superior. And again, uh, Simon was very open, so that that is awesome. And do you know what? What I like about this show is that it's breaking all the molds of stereotypes it really is um, so you know how important do you feel it is to have more prominent females on our screens you know breaking these molds because like I, we, we, we were chatting before the the interview my two girls I want them to grow up looking up to some amazing strong females on our screens because I don't agree with with how they've you know stereotypically you know, portrayed fe- fe- females on our screens. So with this show, it's kick-ass. It's amazing. So how, you know, how important do you feel it is to have prominent fe- females in leads and kicking ass on screen? That's fundamental. <laughs> uh, first of all, because they work very well. And mm. uh, <laughs> it's just, it's not just the time. They've always been there. They've always mm. been hidden in the crowd, in the um, in the hegemonic narrative, the male narrative, they've always been their leads and very strong women in history. It's just that they weren't described or um, you know remembered in the uh, in the big books of, of of story and history. So I just think that now they're emerging as who they are, and not just uh, sisters of mothers of cousins of like you know in in handmaid's tale of joseph mm. of carl um so they they have their own personality hmm? mm. not just related to uh to male characters to men characters and uh yes there's this uh this scene in season one where alba um, ava looks up at uh the statue in the courtyard of cat's cradle and it's a man. And so she asked Father Vince, she said, well, it's quite surprising that, I don't remember the sentence exactly, but she says, basically, there's, um, you know, the, the whole order is based on the sacrifices and the heroic gestures of a woman. And then there's the statue of a man standing in the middle. And so I, I, I think that is very strong. If you walk in a square and there's Rosa Parks or mm. Simone de Beauvoir, it's certainly different than, uh, you know, some hero whose gestures are also ambiguous, <laughs> <laughs> historically speaking. So yes, I think it's absolutely important. It and it, it's 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 a narrative that is becoming more and more uh, popular, mm. hopefully. And Sil, Sil, Sylvia, it's been a great pleasure pleasure to have you on the show. I've got one more question, like- and this is actually from a fan that, that 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 has messaged me. She wanted to know, in regards to a possible season three, what direction would you like to see your character go in if we get a season three? Hmm. Discover more and more. I think that's the direction that uh, everyone wants their characters to go towards, Mm. to getting to know more and more. And do you know what? There's so many possibilities. The way the show ended for season two... In style, it's literally open it opened up so many, you know, paths of the store store story, especially uh, with Yasmin and, and and yeah, it's just I, I I cannot wait. But Sylvia, you've been a great guest. Thank you so much for your time. Keep safe, and as always, stay super. And thank you so much for your part in this amazing, amazing, amazing storytelling of Warrior Nun. It's just fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much.